to finding calm in the chaos. I am Denise Sip, and this is my podcast. Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Wednesday, and welcome to another episode of Finding Calm in the Chaos. I am Denise. This is my podcast. And guess what, people? My friends, today I am celebrating my two-year podcasting anniversary. I, two years. Two years. It has been one of the most fulfilling, fun, rewarding, and just consistent things that I've done in two years, like project wise. I absolutely love this. And I really think it's my thing, whether I'm talking to myself or I'm not talking to myself. Obviously, I'm not talking to myself because I am being listened to in a ton of countries now. I actually wanted to go through, um, I was going to bring that up before the podcast, before I started recording. And then I'm like, eh, didn't see that. Um, let me pull that up now. Uh, I am literally at awe with just where I'm being listened to. It, so I'm being listened to right now in apparently over 52 countries. My top listening countries are United States, France, Croatia, Norway, the top five, hold on, and Australia. So those are my top five listen to companies, uh, countries, which is freaking awesome sauce. Norway, I'm pretty sure it's a hockey friend of mine. I'm not going to say his name because he's retired, but I'm pretty sure that's you, dude, and I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> it's been an interesting experience. And like I said, I absolutely enjoy doing this. I feel so connected more with people. Just recently met up with um, a friend, an online friend, Jen. And she, uh, we have been friends for four years online. Uh, she is local, like within 30 minutes of my house, but we just haven't met each other for whatever reason, whatever, you know, life happens, peeps, okay? And so we decided we were gonna meet up over um, this candy cloud thing. So if you don't know what Candy Cloud is, you just have to Google it. It is a drink, like beverage place, and um, it's delightful. <laughs> We're just going to put it. I'm going to leave it at that. It's delightful. I could do a whole podcast just on how much I love Candy Cloud. Uh, and my friend Jen also loves Candy Cloud. And because of our mutual obsession with Candy Cloud, we have decided since she's 10 minutes from it and I'm willing to drive it to go there. Uh, we're just going to start texting each other every time I'm there so that if she's free, she's going to come over. There's that. So I got to meet her and her son and, um, he was what a good looking boy and, um, and, and just, just a nice kid overall. So there's that. So good things have come of this. I've met tons of people. We're meeting our Scottish friends in, um, it'll be what about a week, week and three days, something like that. Um, and then we're going to hang out with our uncle in Toronto, um, which made me laugh because we were like, so do you want us to drive to Toronto from Niagara or do you want to like come down? We're going to Niagara. And, um, he, he was like, you don't want to come to Toronto <laughs> there. The, no. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. Is it a whole like Chicago now? That's where I'm from. I know my town was, was ruined too. So apparently Toronto is a whole now too. Sorry if you're from Toronto, but sorry, not sorry. Um, that's what happens when your own people within it don't want people to come. That's an indication right there. When people tell me all the time, oh yeah, you know, uh, what should I do when we come to Chicago? And I'm like, stay out of Chicago? Like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's not the city I grew up in. I'm like, whatever. So I don't know. There's that. But. I um, wanted to just go over some stuff celebrating my two-year anniversary um, of podcasting, just kind of like the things I did to get where I am, okay? Because I, I honestly, I'm, honestly, guys, I cannot tell you 
how many times I've tried to stay committed to a goal that went like down the drain in a matter of days, sometimes minutes. Like I had it and it was like, bye. But I read in the past, I've read Atomic Habits. I've read um, The Five Second Rule by Jen Cicero. Um, That one is really helpful. If you have trouble just like getting up to do stuff, read The Five Second Rule by Jen Cicero. That is, and then you have to actually implement it. That has helped me wonderfully, okay, in the morning, all of that. But um, Atomic Habits also does that. That's what uh, James Clear, right? So he'll, he basically tells you basically the reasons why you aren't staying committed to your goals, right? Why? Because it's you. It's not them, it's you, okay? And your systems and stuff like that. So, and then Jen Cicero gives you a system, right? Five second rule, like do it, get over it, do it, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so, um, you, it's just, it's not usually you. From what I've gotten from all the books, it's not me. My issues in the past have been the systems that I put in place for myself. Um, one of the things was, is I had to remind myself of the outcome, right? The first step is how you stay committed to your goals by reminding yourself of the actual outcome. If you would have told me like two years ago, oh yeah, you're going to start a podcast because I wasn't in that mind frame yet that, you know, two years later, you'd be celebrating an anniversary of actually doing over 150 episodes, doing every Wednesday. It's like, no, not going to happen. But because I knew me, I had horrible systems and just all of that. But you have to keep it fresh in your mind and remind yourself what you want, how much you want something. I really wanted this podcast to work. I wanted to be able to talk about to basically find a platform where I could talk. I love to talk. Y'all know that, right? Um, but where I could talk just about my trials, tribulations, celebrations, not celebrations, lows, lows, super lows, highs, that kind of thing. So that people wouldn't feel alone, that it is the same thing. You know, I'm paying for all this therapy. I should share. <laughs> I mean, for real, some of you have said, like, I can't afford therapy. Thank you for yours. Um, You're welcome. I'm not a therapist, but I've been seeing one for 25 years, so there's that. Um, I just, like, spread the joy. I spread the joy. But everything is a process, okay? And there's always going to be mistakes. That's, like, the thing that was my biggest deterrent. If you made a mistake, I just quit. But if you have motivation towards your goal, the most frustrating parts of the process don't seem as bad because you're building from nothing. I built this from nothing. And so that's what you need to do just little by little. Is it, do I want to get, am I like the highest I can go? Nope, not even close. Is it better than I thought? Actually it is a lot better than I thought. And so that gives me future motivation towards a goal to grow this podcast at a greater level, more downloads per month, more people sharing, commenting, that kind of stuff. And so that is what gives me that motivation to keep moving, reminding myself of my outcome versus every little tiny step during the day, right? And then take small steps toward your goal. I'm not going to be like the Joe Rogan podcast in one shot, right? I'm not going to have Ramit Sethi's platform. I'm not going to have Jen Sinsero's platform. I just don't have that right now. But each big goal someone achieves is created by small actions. That includes me. That includes you, right? When, you know, let's say you run marathons. I don't, but I'm just guessing, right? Do you just randomly run like 26 miles? Just, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, you you have to train. You train with less miles and you gradually increase as you build that strength and resistance and all of that, right? The same idea works with staying committed to your goals, okay? If you have a goal of staying healthy, 
don't like suddenly cut out all unhealthy foods from your life that you're setting yourself up, right? You're like, mm, that's not, and that's what we all do. Okay. Um, you might be able to do it. Okay. And that's awesome. But you know, it's going to be harder for your body than when you give yourself flexibility. So like right now, everyone's just like, oh, you posted a picture the other day of like vegan, uh, uh, scones. I, I made vegan banana scones. They were amazing. Three ingredients, bananas, self-rising flour, and yogurt. I Okay. So when I say yogurt, there is plant-based yogurts, people. Okay. I love Coco June. I love the Coco June. However, you can use whatever you want. Okay. And then I had a taste for bacon. And I thought, what goes good with bananas? Bacon. If you question that, make it and you will not be disappointed. I challenge you to make an ice cream sundae, vanilla with bananas, caramel, and crumpled bacon on top. Like actual bacon, not that crap like in a jar. Don't do that. Like we can't even be friends if you do that. Um, But I thought, ooh, like I made some honey butter with plant-based butter. And I put in some honey and I know that some people are like, honey is made by bees. And technically there's some controversy. I don't really care because I'm not vegan. Okay. I'm just plant-based and I'm 90% plant-based, 10% regular. So I had some damn bacon with my vegan scones and I put on some oat butter that I made honey butter with. And then I drizzled more honey on top of it all. And it was amaze balls. Amaze balls. It was so good. Um... But you've got to give yourself the flexibility. I don't mind eating salads. For, I had an amazeball salad for lunch. Okay. There was like spinach in there and some quinoa and beans. I had pinto beans. And it was like in a spicy thingy with cauliflower, like roasted cauliflower. It was, it was delightful. And a bunch of little, it had pumpkin seeds in it. It was delicious. Um... But you, you have to like give and take, give and take. If you don't just, if, if I didn't have the bacon, I would have like the next day made a pound of bacon, ate it all and made myself sick. Just enjoy, right? Give yourself the flexibility. Don't set yourself up with failure, okay? Start by saying that you're gonna eat a small amount or a particular amount of fast food or junk food a week or it doesn't even have to be faster junk food. For me, it's just meat, right? Non-plant-based food. And then keep lowering it until you're eating way healthier, right? And it's not frustrating, but you'll actually make your goal last. And you'll make it happen. I hate when people are just like, I'm going to go on a diet. And then three hours later, it was like, oh, I totally had this. I caved. What do you mean? You didn't even start. What do you, I didn't like, we literally just had a conversation. You were going to do this four hours ago and you caved already. See, that's willpower. And I will tell people that this is the deal. I am trying to eat differently. This is just what I'm doing. Okay. But maybe this mindset will help you guys achieve something similar. I want to eat better so that I last longer on this earth. For me, for Peter, for Mr. Sith, okay? I want to be here. I want to be here and not feel like poop. I want those years to not be in declining health. And for me, I feel like every time I take something that isn't good for me in excess and I eat it versus not having the willpower to make a better option or just put it away and get up and move instead, do something for me. Like I love the color. Y'all know I like to color or listen to a podcast or clean something or work on a project that you're working on. Okay. Every time I don't do that, is time that I am taking away from my son and my family because my body is not going to be able to handle that. So was it really a treat? Did I really cave? Because if I caved, 
then I caved and I didn't care about being here for my family. That sounds a little, it sounds a little harsh, but this is what works for my mindset. I got to be harsh, even for myself. Okay. So there's that. And then back to the podcast. Um, I made my goals attractive. This is exciting. Don't just come up with something and because everybody's doing it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But it has to be attractive to you. Okay. What's a habit that you have? And um, let's just say you like brownies, right? And you have a brownie after dinner. Why'd you start the habit? Um, because brownies are freaking awesome. That's why. Duh. Like, why are you even asking me that, Denise? Okay. But any decent person <laughs> would love a brownie after dinner. And if you don't, then sorry, whatever, pick something else. Okay. But that creates a habit of eating a brownie after dinner. Not hard, right? That was easy. Okay. Same thing goes for your goals. Okay. If you match a habit you don't enjoy with one that you do, it helps. Okay. And this is exactly the process on how I stayed committed to my goals for this podcast. Okay. Uh, maybe like you worked, I don't know, for like an hour towards your goal. That if you do that, you get to watch an episode of, you know, Real Housewives. <laughs> I haven't watched them in ages. I almost feel like I should put it on just to see what the hell's going on. Um, but things like this is going to be what helps uh, motivate you towards like completing a goal so that you get a reward. It's totally okay to do that. Okay. You need to, to step your step into also shifting your mindset, right? Because the habit that you're trying to build might not be fun. Okay. This is fun for me, but there are other ones that are not fun for me. Um, and this is what I do because it's important. It's not fun, but it's important. So instead of having this negative mindset around it, I think of positive things that, and attach it to that habit that I want to do that, that project that I don't really like, uh, I don't want to do that part. Like I love illustrating, but when I have to put it all together, like impose the different like vector layers on top of each other, but do I like that part? Nope. I just want to draw. But it's part, like after that, the joy is going to be seeing this book that I'm creating. And it takes hours and days and weeks and months. And in my particular case, years. I beat myself up over it. And then I thought, why? Why am I beating myself up on it? Because all my friends are shooting out books and doing all this and that. I don't want that kind of book. I want my book the way I want my book. And it's going to be that, and I'm not going to release it, publish it, or do anything until it's what I want, because that's my baby, and it's something that I'm proud of. And I learned that from my friend, Brenda Cooper, who wrote God Goggles, by the way, and she wrote some other stuff. Plus, she's working on another one. So um, check it out on Amazon if you want to. God Goggles, Brenda Cooper. Amazing, amazing. Quick little, I think it's a, uh, yeah, devotional. 90 days? I'm not sure. Um but try, that's what you're going to do, right? Instead of spending years working toward goals and thinking it's instantaneous, right? Be a part of the process. Be a part of your goal process. Be a part of not like just tearing yourself apart, but finding something that is going to bring joy to help you focus on the moment and, and, and add all of those things to it, right? Try to be, try your best to be grateful for the process. That's what I've decided that I'm going to do with the book stuff. Keep track of the little wins and then don't be hard on yourself. Because that's something that we don't do as people in general. We don't keep track of our big wins. Do you notice that? We always just kind of do like whatever. Oh yeah, well, I, I, you know, I need to do this, but I didn't do anything. Like one of the things is like, everyone's like, oh, you didn't go to Europe, you know, cause all the Europe pictures from last year's vacation came up and, 
Uh, we were all reminiscing, even us, right? Not just you guys, even us. And it was wonderful to look at all that and and realize, like in my case, in some of those, I look at those pictures and be like, man, was I hurting, which is another motivation of taking a negative and a positive experience and using the negative and positive to create a positive experience in the future. I want to move more so that when we go on vacation again, I am not hurting as much in those situations with lupus, right? You're walking around Europe in the sun. It is not lupus's friend. And so if I attach all of the wonderful memories of what I was seeing, all the art and the beauty and, and the history and just everything, right? Family, friends. And I add that on top like a coat to the lupus discomfort. It makes it worth it. Well, I don't want to exercise, but if I do... I'll be able to experience all of these great things, but without so much discomfort. And so it's little ways like that, that I wind up like just kind of pushing myself. Did I exercise now that I'm mentioning that and looking at my Peloton bike? Did I do last week what I wanted to do? Nope. Did I do some things? Yeah. Am I going to beat myself up over it? No. I'm just going to like chuck it up that it's over. It was a holiday week. Now get your butt back up on there and just do what you got to do, period, right? Quit messing around. And that's all you can do. So that's what I have for today. As you notice, I did not do a, a sponsor. Um, I'm taking this month off also for sponsors because I got big ones coming up in the fall. So that's what we're doing. Plus it allows me to talk straight through, cuts up the time, all of that. So Oh my gosh. So happy second year anniversary, Finding Calm in the Chaos podcast. Thank you to each one of you for listening every week and me seeing those downloads and being part of what motivates me to do this every day. Love you guys. And until next week, lead with kindness. Bye.